Our first topic is about why your website doesn't bring you any clients. And I pulled just a random card. One story could be the dragon in the city. There's a dragon outside the city walls. Your world is no longer safe. What should you do? A. Escape and find a safer place. Defend and strengthen those city walls. Attack. Take on the dragon before he gets any stronger. Each option has risks and rewards. Let's see how this works. So what is our city? What do we want to defend? So that's the question. Is it the website? But is it that the website itself doesn't get you clients? or is it that we have competition? What's the dragon, let's just say? When you say competition, what do you mean by that? So think about if I'm in LA and I want to find a new training barn gotcha. and I Google training barns around LA, I get about 20 barns of which 19 websites suck. <laughs> and I look through the 19 and I'm not any smarter or more educated about which one I should pick. I think that for our people, as much as anything, is that they think their website will take them out of obscurity and it doesn't because it's a bad website. They're not sending traffic to it in any way. So it's just like, I live on a backcountry lane and I'm going to put a sign out saying I train horses ethically and expect people to drive by it and pull in and say, sign me up, mm -hmm. you know, same idea, mm -hmm. except um, there's 500,000 other people on that lane and all the signs are crowded out anyway. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing is, is that they are unclear, like their website doesn't communicate and educate well enough. So circling back around to it, not being a good website. The dragon, there are multiple dragons. Yeah. One of the dragon is mm -hmm. there's just multiple websites and people choose from websites. And so how do you stand out? So not standing out is one risk, right? I I think that's twofold as well because they're afraid to stand out as an ethical horse first professional because they think that makes them woo woo or less than they're afraid of selling perfect i like that and what would that enemy be like maybe fear of losing clients i think it's fear of standing out right fear what's the consequence of that of being criticized they'll be criticized for one the other one is they will have to level up and be fully themselves so we have one competitor in general so that's one dragon the other dragon is fear of losing status by not standing out and fear of gaining status say more about gaining status that fear that they will be noticed mm -hmm. and they will have to take massive action and put the money where their mouth is so to speak yeah so fear of success yeah fear of success okay perfect so what is another dragon you said like websites are just really bad they're not speaking to the client at all what kind of a dragon would that be like lack of clear messaging? I think there's different levels of this as well. One is that they DIY it and do so because they believe they can't have a quality website on a small budget. So they think they have to go to really fancy designers. Yeah, they also more focused on the looks of the site rather than the messaging on the site. Yeah, there's another element of that fear of marketing. So if their website looks too good, good and is too professionally done, they're going to be viewed as somebody that is trying to sell or non-approachable, too good to be hired. Okay, so we have several enemies. We have competitors in general. We have the fear of criticism and losing business by standing up to what they believe. Fear of getting too much attention because now they're going to have to act. Lack of clear messaging, which is also a lack of knowledge on how to do that, how websites should look like so when we're saying do it yourself the enemy here is a fear of spending money or maybe not believing enough in themselves or maybe even not believing that the website is worth spending money on and then we also had the internal fear of marketing which could result in either that they're too good look at trying to sell or that they're like above the average client and mm -hmm. lose that market and circling back around to messaging is there an element of an inability to communicate what they do effectively because they're not not clear they're lacking clarity and yes as well lacking clarity of what they do to who and how so actually we got a whole bunch of enemies attacking the website fort and most of them are internal let's just keep playing with this and see how has it been allowed to get this bad there's a few ways that it's been allowed to get this bad is one they're too busy working in the barn to have the time to learn about this and they are unwilling to learn about it mm -hmm. because they don't find it as important as the work they do. Exactly. 
exactly there's also the misunderstanding like if i do really good work i wouldn't need to advertise myself i wouldn't even have to have a website they would all come flying yeah. what's that field of dreams or something if right you build it they will come so there's actually the overall enemy is a lack of understanding of what a website that actually sells can do for their business and also a lack of attempt to even educate yourself because it's not like it's not out there so a lack of time because you're so busy working in the business creating a website that sells is actually working on the business mm -hmm. that's what they don't do enough of so maybe overall that is the top dragon of which one of the minor dragons altogether is this fear of a website either getting them too much exposure and expose themselves to criticism or they alienate their average client or they just really don't know how to create a site that converts people from the casual visitor to somebody excited to reach out to them. Um, imposter syndrome. Oh yeah. It's just a flock of dragons. <laughs> right, flock of dragons <laughs> flying around. So the options according to the story is you can escape. Where would you go? What would you take with you? and what's the cost of abandoning the city? This is a really good question, really, right? A lot of people, I think, when they come to us, they will say, my website is like eight years old, but I just kept pushing it off and basically gone to ride another horse. So in that case, their escape is basically just sticking their head in the sand and ignoring the city burning down around them. Perfect, love it. That's exactly it. And also don't have any good models around them where they could say, hey, John, I saw you you, you read it your website or how's your website bringing you new clients um and one thing that i have heard is well in the past people say they've come to me because of my bio therefore they believe that that's the only thing that's going to get them attention is hmm. the bio of their successes and experiences right the awards mm -hmm. it's all about them rather than the viewer or the reader or the visitor of the site there's that misunderstanding too this that they, they feel like they get hired because of what they know and have done versus their actual understanding and expression of what how they mm -hmm. can help. So I think that probably feeds into the answer to how they fight the dragon is they mm -hmm. just adding to their bio. So that's what they think is the best line of attack is to just add more stuff to their list that they have done when we know it's completely irrelevant to the visitor of the site. What are their chances of winning with this? For the people thinking that they rely on their actions accolades and experiences, they think that works because they've gotten a handful of people. And meanwhile, they've left it to those clients to say, okay, well, they've worked with all these people. So clearly they must be able to help me with my goals and needs rather than addressing it and confirming it up front. And what is the reward? And is it worth the risk? To me, it's actually a huge risk and not really worth it because it costs a lot of money to build up this bio. It's like getting better and better and better better and better that's a huge amount of money when you could spend a fraction of that into good marketing and meanwhile as they're spending all of this money to build up their bio they are losing out on opportunity and income that could actually not only pay for all of these experiences that are building their bio mm -hmm. but also make them profitable let's just be honest it's not really just the horse industry we all have this poster syndrome so we add this extra thing and we must learn that before we publish this and yeah, 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 yeah. But it really does cost them a lot of money, impact and financial peace of mind. You know, and one of the things that actually comes to mind as we're discussing this, and I know that so many of my horse friends, the ones that, you know, have similar outlooks on training and riding that I do have the same philosophy is they'll look at XYZ famous person trainer coming to clinic in their area or whatever. However, when I would go and try and learn from somebody, I don't care how famous they are. I want to see how they are with the horses. I want to know that mm -hmm. they're going to teach me in a way that I value, mm -hmm. which is why I turned down opportunities to work with Olympians because I didn't like how they actually treated their horses. Whereas if I went to review a website and it clearly spoke to me about the way they are fair to horses and ethical to horses and their welfare comes above the training and the success, I wouldn't have hesitated to sign up. Correct. And also that they are focused 
focusing on being really good teachers and coaches rather than experts of the topic because just because you know something doesn't mean you can teach it in a way that feels aligned with good horse training you know patient compassionate systematic empathetic you know all of those things unless you're able to explain that in the website like you said the bio doesn't say any of this are you good at teaching what you just learned and how are you applying what you learn you know as an approach well and that goes even deeper to the imposter syndrome where everybody's relying on their bios of who they've worked with to give them that borrowed authority clients aren't going to see them as worthy enough excluding the fact that the people that are having this massive success are those that are naturally talented and naturally athletic and so they don't have to learn as deeply which means they're not good teachers and we whereas the people lot. that are pursuing the education are much better teachers even though they don't have the accolades yeah. human and a good leader okay so the attack that we see most of our clients take by beefing up their perceived expertise it's not the most effective way of getting regularly good well-paying clients that actually love working with them but what's the cost of abandoning your city what's the cost of abandoning the website missed opportunity lack of peace of mind you rely on referrals the whole time which is feast mm -hmm. and famine and some months you might get referred three times and then for six months you don't get referred to a single person not doing that doesn't allow you to ever rest and if you have a website that clearly expresses what you do and how you do it and all of the stuff we just talked about and then you put a system on attracting people to that website you can count on regular new clients mm -hmm. and that's the only way you, you can have peace of mind so the cost of abandoning this particular piece of your business is that you basically sacrifice any kind of peace and the animals are relying on you having sufficient funds so you also put the horses in your care in jeopardy so escape doesn't work attack doesn't work how do we then right. best defend the business you know defending would be what is worth defending in the old city so how can you strengthen your walls walls protect but they also restrict what's the cost of staying put if in effect our clients knew that a website can be a selling tool not just a brochure that one hopes will attract a new client then i think more of them would want to defend them as we know we see when they come work with us what are the elements on a website that would actually account for good defense okay. i would think that at this point you are actually proactively taking steps against the dragons got it right exactly so developing a really good website is like sitting down and writing your resume in a way it's different because it's not about you it's about your ideal clients but the end result like anybody that sat down and written out a resume at the end goes hey i'm pretty good at this i'm really qualified at what i do and so that kind of gives them that sense of professionalism that combats that dragon of self-doubt imposter syndrome it lets them feel like they can stand their own when surrounded by all of this competition but a resume a good resume is very different from a bio because when i first listened to you like what's mm -hmm. the difference but a resume is outcome oriented when i did this this happened when i took over this position i increased revenue I by 250 percent it's essentially it's storytelling painting a picture of how their past Past actions will benefit the employer that they're you know exactly right yeah one of the things then it's clear it's neither hiding no exaggerating what the true benefits are of working with you because of the skills you have but if I say once I did that and I took on these clients that had these concerns after them working with me for 30 days 40 days three years they were able to do that which is exactly what a good resume does right mm -hmm. that's really cool so we usually start at i got a problem and i'm needing a new solution so this could be i have a problem i don't like my barn i'm looking for a new barn i have a problem with my trainer i need a new trainer something that i want to have solved so then i'm going to look at what so i'm problem aware then i'm looking for solutions what are the things that i can do to get that resolved and then your solution aware meaning you and your particular unique composition of skills allows this person to find a solution in a way that feels great to them and most people on 
percent of the sites that we look at don't guide the reader through that process the other part of the website you know is our our hero in this story mm -hmm. is afraid of coming across as salesy and inauthentic it's that fear of judgment right and a really well done website is going to start to build a relationship of trust it lets the visitor feel seen and heard and valued and it also takes off the pressure of selling right you make the visitor the hero mm -hmm. so now you don't have to feel under sales pressure you're not selling yourself you make the visitor the hero the things they have already accomplished the investment in their horse the love they have for their horse the understanding for their concern mm -hmm. now you don't have to be salesy you just the reader all of a sudden goes Oh, yeah, that's true. I've done all that. Thank you. That builds a lot of trust. So often it's a common enemy that you could define and it's not a person, it's not a trainer. It's, not, it's maybe a paradigm. It's a way certain things are done or traditionally been done. And you know that your ideal client is against that thing. And so are you. It needs to be pointed out because two against something, that's a bond that you can create on the website. Absolutely. Also call to actions, we call them, right? Buttons at strategically specific places on the homepage and the subsequent pages to guide the reader through this process of making decisions. Mm -hmm. So every click is what we call a mini yes. Hop over here to learn more. Click means yes, I'm staying with you. I'm turning the page, so to say. Next, I often equate this to like a page turn a book. What happens at the end of every chapter is something like, and then I did this if I had only known what, like, you foreshadow that something is going to happen and I'm going to go and flip another page. I think your stats show like people stay on websites 2.9 seconds or something on the average if that. So I got to be sure that I'm creating the first page turner like within the first two seconds. And that may just be a scroll. It doesn't even have to be a click. Mm -hmm. But at some point I want to click and a click and a click to a point where this person walks through this funnel of I got a problem. I now I'm learning about solutions oh my lord i like the solution you're giving me reach out and so i think just the combination of the structure the call to action making the reader the hero writing truly like a resume that is outcome oriented to benefit of the reader when we research websites and we do reviews we hardly ever see anybody do this meaning that if our client does it they instantly eliminated all competition in the area so in regards to close this up but in regards to those inner dragons you know those websites don't really they're not boasting they're not arrogant they're not overly sophisticated whatever they're just like you said they build an intimate relationship with the reader the visitor long before they even contact you and when done well they should be compassionate empathetic and again just circling back to starting to build that trust yeah show your own values in the way you communicate your authenticity with the visitor and that builds tremendous trust it's about building a relationship just like we all do with horses so ultimately also that you know you said like they do it themselves on a small budget because they lack in the trust of the effectiveness of a website a website that like that doesn't need to cost a lot of money as a matter no. of fact we build those websites for clients all the time even though they're beautiful but they're highly effective and they their businesses change so it's the wording it's the messaging it's the understanding your hero and then guiding them through a structure that psychologically works is much more important than that big budget and the big images. Well, and how often have we seen big budget websites that are just aesthetically beautiful, Don't but do anything for the sales process. Exactly. Or they are so expensive looking that rightly so a visitor says, this is completely out of my budget. These guys are going to be so expensive. I don't even need to contact. And then fear of marketing, lack of clarity. In order to write such a website, you need to know who they are, your people what you do for them and how you do it. And when you convey that with some words and some headlines and some simple images, you will get people to come to you pre-sold on your services. Very cool. So overall, we vote that you neither escape by working harder and hope that people come. You neither attack by, you know, adding one more thing to your bio, but that you actually defend your business with a website that creates trust and a relationship, conveys very clearly what you do by putting the 
reader into the hero position and you being, you know, a highly qualified servant for that hero, like a wise guide. So that hopefully takes away the fear of sleazy type of marketing. You know, and, and another just quick example of how that works is just putting yourself in the role of a consumer, somebody searching for services for anything, like a plumber. I don't care how expensive they are or how cheap they are. I want to know that they are going to fix my problem and they are going to treat me well. And I've had services, for example, trying to do basement repair where I had to chase, like they came highly recommended, had a phenomenal warranty and all of that, big fancy presentation. I had to chase them to get them to do the most basic business services, like sending me a contract on time, communicating effectively. I lost all trust in them mm -hmm. and walked away from them. Really good point. So I hope that one is already really good for us. 